Our holiday started in glorious Technicolor at Singapore Changi Airport during our stopover on the way to Yangon, Rangoon. There was a wonderful display of local orchids growing in as natural a situation as could be provided under cover in the airport's concourse. Our hotel in Rangoon was a splendid affair. It was located on the edge of a lake. The lake had a number of novel features, one of which was a wooden walkway around its perimeter. The other was this gilded boat, or a representation of a boat, out on the centre of the lake. Quite an enormous affair. I don't really know whether it had any religious significance or whether it was purely decorative, but it was quite something. There was also a shrine uh, on a little island or peninsula sticking out into the lake and quite a number of people were there paying homage and leaving their little gifts. These two lads were just wanting American dollars, I think. The lake made the whole thing very photogenic. And uh, as you can see, the walkway and the pagoda in the distance makes for some quite interesting pictures. Plus this fountain with a uh, rainbow caused by the effect of the sunlight and the uh, very significant amount of water spray. There was even a petrified dinosaur in the hotel garden. But far more interesting from my point of view were the orchid samples hanging up in a uh, greenhouse situation ready presumably for planting at the appropriate time of year. And now down to the serious business of steam railways at uh, Yangon Station. Very interesting the advertisements on the platform for products that we used to take for granted in England, Dettol, Cadbury chocolate and so on, which seem to have disappeared from our own high streets. And yet here they were in Rangoon, the other side of the world.
Photographic interlude over and our little trip to begin.
often said that the railway gives a backdoor view of the country. That's true, of course, but in this country it also appeared to give a front door view because people lived on and around the railway premises and used it as their main means of access to their properties, whether that be their dwellings or their farmland. And so the railway served both as a back and a front door.
Buddha in the distance. Thank <laughs> you. 
The locomotive works at Insane seem to be pretty self-sufficient. The bulk of their work would appear to be the servicing of the Myanmar diesel locomotive fleet, but evidence of continuing work on steam traction was there. The rear of the workshop housed a steam crane, which was obviously still used, and there was a steam locomotive boiler. It wasn't apparent which set of frames it was going to end up on, if at all. But three locomotives are scheduled for heavy repair during 2006. But the uh, so-called elephant's graveyard of steam locomotives at the rear of the works was quite a sad sight. Some would quite clearly never steam again if they could be dug out from the undergrowth, but there were some which could, I suppose, in an emergency, be brought back into action. The one that interested me primarily was the Garrett locomotive, which was, in fact, high up on a bank. But uh, as these locomotives, or all locomotives, in this country run to the metre gauge, it's unlikely that it would ever be repatriated to run in its country of birth, and there we have it. repair facility, just one or two views and a diesel standing just outside the works and this is the pattern shop associated with the foundry hence my comments about the works being self-contained rather like Swindon One of the major cultural centres in Yangon is the Shwedagon Pagoda complex. This is a truly amazing complex of gold encrusted, jewel encrusted buildings looked after by a very loyal army of volunteers and visited I'm sure by every tourist who comes to the capital city. <clears throat> I don't quite know how it's financed, whether it's financed simply by public donation, it's not apparent, but uh, there are monks living there because every young man in this country has to do one 
week as a monk before he's 20 and another week after he's 20 and some of course choose to stay like this old gentleman of 68 years old and this one I think he said he was 74 and they live by essentially begging or seeking alms from the people who pass by and take their photograph and chat to them. They were very affable and like most of the Buddhist people that we met, very content and benign individuals. A spectacular, really spectacular location which to my Anglican eyes was somewhat incomprehensible but nevertheless I could acknowledge the loyalty and the devotion. In our hotel in the evening at dinner we were treated to a splendid exhibition of local stage performances. Dancers, fire eaters, puppeteers, mime, gymnastics and so on. Very very colourful and appreciated by all those who sat and watched the performance and listened indeed to the music of the band whilst they ate their evening meal. On our return to Yangon, our first port of call was this spirit tree which houses the spirit that is uh, presumed to protect road travellers. Well, at the moment the traffic volumes in Yangon aren't very great so perhaps the spirit's doing a good job but we will see what happens over the next few years. And then it was back to much more sombre business, a visit to the Tolkien War Cemetery maintained by the War Graves Commission. I don't recall how many Allied prisoners of war are buried here, but the number must be immense. It's a beautifully maintained cemetery, as was the one we visited on the 
Death Railway. Shades of Grecian architecture in its styling. The graves were laid out in rows as we were familiar, the format with which we were familiar. And here are just two of the stones. This gentleman, Mr. Cullimore, who was a Gloucestershire regiment man, may well have come from the Wotton under area, and Lieutenant Cairns, a Victoria Cross holder. On our return to the city of Yangon, we visited the Anglican Cathedral, dedicated to the Holy Trinity. The dedication stone indicates that it, the foundation, at least, was laid in 1886. Here's a view of the high altar in the east window. And the Burma Star Association uses the side chapel as its base for its commemorations. Wonderful place beautifully maintained. And finally, a visit to an open-air market, Scott Market. Well, partly open-air, partly undercover in an arcade situation. Plenty to choose from. You could have spent a day there. This was the store from which we bought our little carved elephant device. Altogether, wonderful end to our trip to Yangon.